Hey guys, welcome to Fulton Street Beats. There's this little amazing Hot One amp, and that's what I call a Hot One because it's H-O-T-O-N-E, and to me that spells Hot One. I don't know how it could be Hot Tone because there's not enough T's to be a Hot Tone. I guess it could be a Ho Tone. You could have a Ho Down with the Ho Tone. I don't know, but I digress. Anyhow amazing little five watt amp that simply cranks and if you're going to try to compare this to a big marshall head 5150 no for small gigs practice sessions jam sessions home studios amazing the sound is really really nice and it's hard for me with the equipment i have to convey that sound to you the viewer but it's really good. And uh, as we go here, we'll upgrade equipment. Of course, I'm just running things through a sound card right now. So, But, um, guys, I know I got an email, and you guys, yes, I don't mind emails, but simple questions, you can just drop them in the comment section below. It's easier for me to answer them there than it is to go through all my emails like that because I get a lot of spam, and I have to filter things out, so. If I don't return your email, it's not that I'm ignoring you. It's just that I've missed it. Anyhow, um, this little amp, this little 5-watt amp, I've spent a lot of time with this for the last few days. And, man, I, I can't get away from it. I, I'm, I play and I lose myself where I am and what I'm playing through. And then I look over and I go, how can that little one pound whatever ounce one pound three ounce something like that amp good solid construction by the way how can it produce that clean power and i guess the audio file in me tells me that well i guess that's totally possible i mean look at my tube amps See, i got a 15 watt tube amp that simply destroys 200 watt amps that aren't um that are solid state you know what i mean so and um, what you doing for it there? And so, I mean, whatever they got going on in here, it's good. The reason I'm doing this video is because some of you were interested in this, and yes, I picked this one up on eBay. However, I wanted to do a little bit more research on this. I like to share with you guys when something goes good, and this went extremely well. So, um, I went to their website, and. Um, hot one or hot tone or ho tone, however you want to say it. They have a few of these and they used to make other ones, but I guess they're discontinued. But I'll tell you what they have. We can click on each one and I can tell you guys exactly what um, they are. Now they have one called the British Invasion. And let's click on this one. In the Brit I'll probably try to put a picture up of these if I can. British Invasion, another five watt, same thing. Um, three band EQ, the whole thing. So we know we know the spiel of the power and stuff. If you watch it, I run through it real quick. If you want, so let's start out right now by saying the British Invasion is inspired by the leg legendary Vox AC30. So it's supposed to produce Vox AC30 sound. I don't doubt it because I know what this one sounds like. So I don't doubt that. Of course, compact design very compact design my dog's by my feet that's what's uh, going on here um three band eq it's uh compa compatible with cabinets from four to 16 ohms so there you go big big variety of cabinets you can run with this and it does have of course the fx loop for your external effect effects um it has a head foot he headphone output of course and uh, auxiliary jack, so you can uh, jack in your external music source to play through the headphones and jam with it if you like. I've did that a few times. Um, works well. 18-volt uh, DC power. The adapter is included. I don't know what she's eating back here. Go to bear. What are you doing? Anyhow, 5-watt output. And it weighs a little bit over a pound. 
Okay, so that's this one, and that one's called the British Invasion. Another nano legacy. And you see nano, right? And they get this nano because it's so small. And then you have your micros, of course, when you go to like your orange and your micro tear and things like that. And they're quite a bit bigger than these, of course. But I had the micro tear, and I'll tell you, I like the sound of this better. That's just me. Sound is subjective. Um, and then we'll go back, and let's go to the... So that was the... Uh, British Invasion. Let's go to the Purple Wind. Now, the Purple Wind, another, and it is purple, which is got a purple cover instead of the green. Um, same thing, except this was in, inspired by the Marshall Plexi Super Lead 1959 Limited Edition. Still don't know what she has back here. She's a good girl. Anyhow, big German Shepherd. Um, same thing, 1959 limited edition. And as that's that's the difference is the sound. So whatever they're processing they have going on in here, that's what it's getting you. So from the Marshall Plexi Super League, 1959. Now that's not, this is not, um, they're just mentioning the name Marshall. There's no affiliation with any of these amps. They are just trying to get, close to the reproduction of the sound. And then we have one that I'm interested in, another one, and that's called the Heart Attack. And it's a cool name, right? And that's got a, a red cover on it. And um, this one, let's see. This Heart Attack is the newest member of the Nano line. It's for metal heads, it says. Um, I'm not seeing what it's trying to replicate. Similar to the other Nano heads in compact and design, unique sound and feel. It says uh, it's based on the Mesa Boogie Rectifier. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, offering metal players that classic hard rock gain sound. And you can put it in your pocket, pretty much. Un unimaginable mass of energy plugged in without losing control. I like the way they worded that. I want that one. So maybe we can work on getting one of those in the studio. Um, very cool. I'd like to have them all to tell you the truth. And then we have a Thunder Bass. And that's a silver cover. That's called it's a Nano Legacy Thunder Bass. And I take it that that's a this is a bass amp. Let's see what we have. Based on the Ampeg SVT. A big thunderous sound into a mini sized amp. Whatever you are, the bassist in the spotlight or the one keeping the pulse in the shadows, this solid amp, amp will suit. Flexible, dynamic, and stable. Yeah, this is a bass amp and um, pretty cool of the MPEG SVT. So for your bassists out there, you're not left out. And it's called the Thunder Bass. And the last but not least, we have the Mojo Diamond. That's right. Give it to Mojo. And that's one of the another new member, it says. And um, Mojo Diamonds, I'm trying to figure out what it's based on. That's based on the Fender Tweed. Okay. And um, it's a loud, sweet sound. So something you're going to want to play with a Strat for sure. And um, I'm not a big, I mean, I like Strats, but I, I, I don't play it much. But when I want to do the blues, that seems like it would be cool. So that's what they have. They got all kinds of stomp pedals and everything else too. Um, this uh, this company does. They got a website if you go to it. A lot of videos. So that's cool. And they do show off a lot of sound. I can't show you a lot of sound because, like I said, I'm running through a very inexpensive sound card, and that's it. But I wanted to touch base on those in case you're interested in any different sounds. Now this. Well, so you want to know, I, I didn't go over the one that I have, did I? These was it even in the line? It's not even there anymore. So this might be discontinued. So this is the Freeze B. If you can find one of these, maybe that's why the prices are so low. This was $56. And man, it's the best 56 bucks I've ever spent, ever. Hands down. I mean, the sound you get, it's a wall of sound. It's beautiful. Beautiful. It's all usable. So... You're, you know how you get an amp and you turn something up and it just goes out of the realm of what sounds good? 
no matter what position you have any of these knobs in, the, the, the tone is, is usable. Usable mids, usable bass, usable treble, usable gain. I think I made my light flicker. Yes, I did. I don't It's magic. It's the Jedi in me. Anyhow, it works great. What I really like about this is this toggle switch. I like I like toggles. It's got a nice toggle, and I like the, the solid feel of this. I simply place this on my amplifier over here, right behind me. See, I have this amp. I have everything set up. I plug it into my amp. You can't do that. You can't do that, Spicoli. I can. Because what I did is I made a cable and I ran it to a switch. I put a toggle on the back where I can alternate between amplifier power for the amp itself and running this if I want to in uh, by itself. So no danger of ruining anything. You don't want to run an amp into an amp, but that's for sure. So what I do is I kill the power to the amp internally. There's no fuss, no muss. It plugs in. I flick the switch, and boom, it's good to rock and roll. And even if I forget this, hit the switch, there's no way power can get to each other because of the switch. So that's pretty cool. Plan on doing a video showing you guys how to do that because I know a lot of people are, have standalone amps. They don't have a big cabinet, and yet, they have one of these, and I'll tell you, this powers that little amp. It's a 40-watt amp that I got back here. 40 watts. This 5 watts is a better sounding. This amp is better sounding than the amp that's over there. And it's louder than that 40-watt amp. What happens with that 40-watt amp, you get it up past a certain range, and it starts breaking up, and it starts distorting and sounding horrible. This thing is all usable throughout the range, thus being able to use that volume it is louder. Um, really cool. So we got other projects. Are good. I was going to do a video today of my Strat upgrade for my Stevie Ray Vaughan build that I'm doing back here. The number one. I was going to install a reverse tremolo like Stevie's was. And it wasn't going to be gold. It's going to be silver because his original one when he had it in was silver with the gold later on. A lot of people don't know that. It wasn't gold to begin with. Then it went from silver to silver with gold screws. But we're just going to install a left-handed tremolo, which means i got to route out the body and install this thing. And I planned on doing a video for you guys today on that because it was supposed to be here in the mail this morning. Well, actually, it was supposed to be here yesterday. And then they updated it to today, and it still didn't come today. Now it says it's just arriving late. So they've changed everything, of course, Postal Service, you know. But... When it gets here, we will get a video up about that and how to make uh, make this fit on this guitar. And um, you know, it requires a little modification, but it will be cool because we definitely need a left-handed tremolo if you're trying to re recreate a, uh, a Stevie Ray Vaughan number one strap. Also, later on in the future, which kind of pains me, I will be changing the neck to a more authentic neck and fretboard. And I really don't want to because this one plays so good. And um, I antiqued this fretboard to make it look worn and played. It looks really cool, actually. If you saw it in real life, it's pretty cool. I got a video on it, how I did that. And it's one of my most hated videos. I don't know. 66% um, likes. And I don't know why. I guess people have never heard of maybe... Thinking outside the box and doing something to your fretboard to get a different effect. Now, if it came that way, I assure you they'd love it. But it didn't come that way. Somebody in a studio someplace did this to the fretboard. So it's kind of weird how people's thinking is. But I assure you it plays fantastic and it looks really good. So I did it. It was an inexpensive guitar. I don't have a lot of money in it. However, it plays fantastic. It's got Wilkinson pickups and... At first, I thought they were Wilkinson knockoffs because they weren't labeled Wilkinson on the inside. They had the covers on, but after testing them, they are Wilkinsons. I found out that Wilkinson, these particular pickups, they don't put any labels on the inside. So, But uh, it equates out to decent sound, so I was assured that they are Wilkinson by the company. So got that going for it. Um, and it sounds good. Man, it's, it is stratty sounding. Um, I was going to actually do some EMG active pickups in it and i'm on the fence about that but um you know things change 
Let's get the look down first, I guess. Let's get that Stevie Ray Vaughan look down. I'm tempted to relic it, but at the same time, it's so pretty. You know, when you got something that's so pretty, you don't want to relic it. Because I look at it this way. I think Stevie's, even though he didn't have it ever when it was new, it was new at some point. So um, maybe we can just let it age itself. I think that would be the best bet. Um, but neck, first we do the trim, and then I'm going to find a neck with a proper fretboard. And um, it doesn't have to be authentic fender, because like I said, this is a project, and I'm building it. So, But it does have to have the proper shape. It's kind of funny, because the, the headstock that's on it now, I labeled fender, but it's not a fender shape, and it's kind of funny. People see it and go, they scratch their head for a second. A fender, it just doesn't have the ball on the end. And I don't <laughs> But the logo looks so authentic, yeah. I, I make those. I make the logos, I put them on, and I lacquer them, and they, they look great. And, and you can I can distress them and make them look old, too. It's got a patent number, you name it on it. It looks cool. So anyhow, guys, I want to thank you for joining me on Fulton Street Beats. And remember, these amps, um, the reason I'm trying to I say push them, the reason I'm trying to recommend them is because this one works so damn good in 56 bucks. So... You know, a hundred and two, you know, two, less than three hundred bucks. Well, less than three hundred bucks. You got every single one that they currently offer that has an amazing sound. And man, I really plan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna every one. I'm gonna buy a probably get one a month and uh, get the whole collection. I'm. I think what I'm gonna start doing is collecting the ones that they don't make anymore if they're still out there and getting those so I can have a whole wall of these little mini amps because they're that good and I want them. And man, they're just fun to play through. That sound. I had a buddy hear mine today. And he said, I never would have believed like he was listening to the amp. And he's like, wow, that amp sounds good for a, holy shit, that sounds good. What is that? And I said, that's not what's playing. It's just the speaker in it playing. And I pointed to this thing, and he's like, what the hell is that? I said, that's an amp head. He goes, you mean that little thing? He goes, how many watts is that? How do they get that many? It's five watts. And he was in disbelief. So I literally had to unplug everything and show him that this was actually running it. because He didn't believe me. So that's pretty, it's just a great conversation piece too. Imagine going to a gig though, or going to a uh, audition. They go in there. Did you bring your equipment? Sure did. Let's go. That's pretty funny. Could you imagine the look on their face? Trust me, let's go. That's funny. This is something like, I'll give you a story. Randy Rhodes, when, uh, when he was auditioning for Ozzy Osbourne, took like this shitty little amp to go audition for Ozzy. He actually didn't want to play for Ozzy at first. His mother made him go and audition. He said to him, you need to rub shoulders with these peoples if you, people if you want to go places. Okay, man. So he goes. <laughs> and he brings the shittiest little, little amp. And of course, Ozzy's all drugged out like he's known for. Yeah. <laughs> All drugged out, lots of alcohol in his system. He walks out, and Randy Rhodes is warming up on this little itty bitty shitty amp. True story. And Ozzy walks in while he's warming up, and he goes, You got the gig, you're awesome. That's how Randy Rhodes got the gig. Can you imagine if Randy Rhodes had one of these things? Seriously. Yeah, I'm just going to bring a little, a little cabinet in this badass head that makes everything squeal because it's a squealer. When you want it to squeal, it squeals. Especially with my fake Les Paul. Oh, let me show you this, guys. We're going to go all over the place because this is fun. This is what it's about, right? Have fun. So I built a Les Paul. And I made it really pretty. It was too pretty. And I said it needs more character. And Timmy, if you're watching, you know the phases. The, the guitar had glitter on it at one point, And it was horrific. And I had to redo it. And it turned out so pretty. You could have hung it in a guitar store and got big bucks. It's just beautiful. I didn't want a beautiful LP. I wanted my uh, my bang around guitar. You know, you get a nick on a beautiful guitar and you're pissed. So I relic, I relic it. And there she be. She looks battle worn. 
Isn't it awesome? It's got bang on it. I don't care. It's my relic, but it plays like a brand spanking new ripping Gibson. But it's not a Gibson. It's not even a Chipson. I built it. It's got a Gibson logo on it that I made. And what's really funny is on the back, it's even got a custom shop logo. And I got amazing tuners on it. Locking. Got really nice electronics. Nice hot pickups. And the thing screams. And I love this guitar. Probably my favorite. Super low action. This was my first guitar build. And I did an outstanding job. And uh, the reason I built this guitar is because I had a shitty, shitty Flying V from Epiphone. An Epiphone Karina V. Flying V. That was shit. And I said, I bet you I can build a guitar better than you guys. And you know what? I did. As a matter of fact, I built five or six of them now that I would put up against playing-wise, playing-wise, anything. This one is my best playing guitar. It's outstanding. Now, I got a lot of, don't get me wrong, I got my gem back here. A lot of money in the gem. The one that looks black right behind me, that beautiful creature back there with those DiMarzios in it. That guitar does one thing well, and that's Steve Vai tones. I mean, seriously, it's wired like Steve Vai's guitar. I actually looked up his wiring diagrams for his guitar to do this, and um, I got a lot of money in that. That was a, that was a um, guitar kit world build, and I got so much money in that guitar now. That, and all those electronics started out in a cheap Leo James gem kit, which is on that side. I don't know if you can see it. But I swapped everything out and put it in this one because I love the Guitar Kit World kit so much. And when I got done building it, it's another work of art. It's be but that one, you get a scratch, and I'm like, eh, and I cringe because this is beautiful. And then we have, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep building them and keep having fun and different things, and I'm trying to figure out which manufacturer I want to go with to build a Flying V to compete with the Randy Rhodes jackson back here or jackson Rhodes over here if you saw that video that unboxing that guitar has some hot ass pickups and it's a squeal it squeals like a piglet like a little piglet no matter like by accident it squeals but it sounds it's metal so i turned it to standard tuning it's okay doesn't shine dropsy she shines i mean it <laughs> You can turn this thing so low where the strings are just falling right off of it and it still sounds good, you know? Action's amazing. Fretboard's amazing. It's an amazing V guitar. It's like 279 bucks, Brand new, and I think entry-level guitar. 279 Jackson Rhodes. You don't need any more. It's great, and I see a lot. I see an issue with some of the Jacksons and their higher-end stuff, and this one's perfect. So if I have to, if I have to pick an order of guitars... I got to say my LP is far sound wise, my LP and then that Jackson and then the guitar I got the most money in, which is the gem would be a third. It sounds good, but it's a one hit wonder. I can pull off blues to metal with the LP and the Jackson. The, the Steve Vai gem that I built style gem. It does Steve Vai stuff. Well, it's, it's really weird. It's in, in between that metal and Strat sound. It's, 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 it's in a box. and That's just how it is. I wish I could say it was different. It seems like it would be hotter than what it is. Like, you know you want to make it squeal, but it's on the verge of squealing, but don't. You can't quite get it to, you know, with a Les Paul, you, you know, that thing squeals like Zach Wilde's mistress. So... But they're all cool in their own way. And the Leo James still holds a special place in my heart. I still play that once in a while because the action's so great. I got some cool guitars. 
We got some over here too, but they're you guys haven't seen those yet. Um, we'll talk about those later. Those are for upcoming episodes. Well, however, I am looking for a flying V or a V or even a Rhodes V to build to compete with the Jackson to see if I can build one that's on par with the Jackson. I I don't think I'm gonna. I mean, I can, looks wise, I can beat it hands down if I want to because the sky's the limit. But the playability of that guitar, they really got it down. I mean, it's a it's a shredder. It's it's built to gr- and it even came tuned. It came tuned. It was tuned when I got it. It was vi- like if it was out of tune, it was very minutely, which means it was checked before it was shipped, and that's cool. Where did I get that now? Musician's friend. Musician's friend is where I got that. So really nice people there. Um. Anyhow, guys, I thank you, and um, I for watching. I got tons more we could talk about, but time is a factor, so I won't. But I hope you guys will stay tuned. Hit that like button, share, and subscribe. I'll be talking to you soon. And remember, we got that Strat tremolo coming up soon. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. And remember, Hot One Nano Legacy Amps kick ass. Peace out, guys. I love you. Bye.